Hi guys, have you ever wondered how to unit test your QML components? Well, in this short video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that using the binary called QML Test Runner that ships with every version of Qt. Let's get to it. So I'm going to show you how to test your QML components using this simple project. You just create a project, a Qt Quick project in Qt Creator. And what does this project have? It has a main.qml, the application entry point. And in main.qml, you have a window with the title, hello world. And within the window, I have my custom component that I called my window uh, with a color gray. Let's have a preview of what our application does. So let's click on the run button on the bottom left. After compiling, this window will show. And as you can see, this is our simple application where we have the text and the button at the bottom left. And when you click save, the text changes to say saved. So in the my window component, it's just a simple rectangle with two child items. The first child item is the text with ID my text. And then the text itself is says it's not saved. And then of course the text item is anchored in the rectangle at the center. For the button, it has an ID of my button and it's anchored to the bottom right of the parent, which is the overarching rectangle. And of course the text of the button is save. And then inside the button, of course, you have a mouse area where you have an unclicked property, where if the button is clicked, then the text says it has been saved. So what we want to do here is to unit test the my window component. And by unit testing, I mean just load this QML and check whether the behavior we expect from this component in isolation works as expected. Okay, so let's create our unit test. Right click anywhere in resources, add new, and then Qt quick QML file. Click choose. So to give it the file name, the file name has to start with TST underscore. And that's what QML test runner looks for when it's running the unit test. So here we're going to give file name of TST underscore, then any name you want. In this case, it will be testing the my window component. So I will call it my window. Okay. Just put the capital here and then click next and leave the project management tab here as default. Click finish. So now what we have is the new QML file, tst underscore my window dot QML. Let's start writing our unit tests. So now that we have this item, it will act as a canvas for our unit tests, where we're going to put our component so that the QML test runner can use that to run our test. So for this item, we're going to, keep, going to give it a width and a height. Okay, so normally I just like to give it 800 and a height to 600. And now to this item, we're going to add our my window component. So you just type my window. And then we give it an ID. So to write a unit test for this component, we're going to add a component that is special for testing known as a test case. And as you can see, immediately Qt complains that it doesn't know what this test case component is. And so we have to import Qt test at the top. So here we say import Qt tests, the latest 1.2. 
Okay. So normally these test cases have um, special properties that you can use for your unit tests. So in this case, I'm just going to give it a test case uh, name for a reference in case it fails. If you have many unit tests, I'll give it a property when and window shown. So this is a special property in Qt Quick Test, which will only run the test case once the window is shown, once the component has been loaded. So just like in other test cases, what we have here in the QML test cases are functions that will be called when the test case runs. So what we're going to test in this unit test is the my window component, which has the behavior of when its button is clicked, this text here, not saved, changes to display saved. So let's unit test this behavior. So to test our component, you're going to create a function. We call it test click button. Let's go back to my window. So when the button is clicked, it changes the text in my text to say saved with an exclamation mark. So in our test, in our unit test, this is what we're going to test for. So we'll begin with declaring a variable, actually two variables. The first one, var not saved text will be equal to the text when the button is not saved, is not clicked. And then the second variable, saved text, will be when the button is clicked. Now we need to find a way so that the texts in the my window component can be exposed to our test case here. Now, normally what happens is that if you want to expose these properties to uh, outside components, uh, all you need to do is to add a property in the component themselves. So this is what we're going to do. So we're going to add a property here. Property string. The name will be save status. And the value will be bound to the text in my texts okay. and to actually simulate the button click we need to expose the button itself to the uh, our unit tests to the outside world so we add another property here the property will be an alias with the name of save button and it will be bound to my button the ID down here. So going back to our test here, can I start verifying some things? We use the verify function and say my window test dot save status initially should be equal to the not saved text. And you're going to give the second argument, which is an optional message if the Verify fails, and here we're just going to give an informative message saying the save status before saving should be equal to the not saved text. So after the first verify, what we can do now is perform the actual click event. And by this, we use the mouse click function given by the test case. And then we give our reference to the window test, the button in the window test. So save button here. After the button is clicked, we will again verify the final state, which should be that my window test dot save status should be equal to the saved text. And if this fails, you can give the message to say the save status after saving should be 
PC text. That's pretty much it. So here is my terminal. And as you can see, we are currently in the project directory, our testing project. So what we need to do is run the QML test runner binary. And there are several ways to do it. The easiest is to just navigate to your Qt installation, the bin folder. And then you can verify that the QML test runner is somewhere in here, the binary. And as you can see, here it is. Now that we've verified QML test runner is in our bin folder, what we're going to do is we'll go navigate back to our project folder. And then we're going to run our test from here. So we'll give it the QML test runner's absolute path to run the binary. It takes in the test file using the input argument. And then our test file is psd mywindow.qml. And then hit enter. And you can see it gives three passes because it runs an init test case and a cleanup test case. But in our case, our main testing method is the test click button, which also passed. And then it gives some statistics of this. I'm not sure if you noticed, but if you run the test again, you will see the window pop up. That will be our item, which was simulating the canvas where it put our component for testing. Did you see it? So if you don't want that window to come up and just run the test case in, in a headless mode, then all you need to do is to add uh, another argument here, platform, and use any platform that doesn't have a window, for instance, off screen. You can look up an explanation of this in the Qt website, but basically what it does, it just runs the tests in a headless mode. And when you do that, there's the window that pops up and the test actually runs much faster. Compare now it's five milliseconds and the previous run was 57 milliseconds. What does happen, however, is you now find some warnings about the fonts, and this will not be a problem if you would bundle your application uh, using a compilation process. So guys, that's it. All you need to do is create a test case using the test case component given to you by Qt tests in Qt, in the Qt framework, and then go on to define your specific conditions that where you want to check for the behavior of your component in the unit test. And that's it guys. So if you like this video, if it's helped you in any bit, you can like this video. And if you want to see more of what I will come up with in the future, you can subscribe to my channel. Alright, thank you and have a nice time.